For those eagle-eyed listeners, you may notice throughout this episode that Joe Buckley not only had a leaf blower, a lawnmower, and a vacuum going off during his audio, but he did not apply the presets to his audio that I wanted him to. As a result, his audio might sound a little bit weird in this episode, but I've cleaned it up the best I could. I hope you enjoy it. Hello everyone, and welcome to a very special episode of Noise Boys. Oh, Joe kind of caught on to it. (laughs) Nice, nice. As you can tell right here, this is a special trio episode. Uh, This is myself, Alex, who you may have heard of from the podcast Let Me Tell You About, and Joe, who is in multiple podcasts now. He's he's uh, he's a budding baby bird. I think he's been in at least three, almost as many as I've been in. I don't think Joe's been in a Nazi podcast yet, though. I don't think that's happened yet. No, no, I don't believe so. I, I, I try to not uh, associate myself with the alt-right, the, the fascists as they're known. I try not to get in bed with them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But okay, sometimes Joe. the bed is cold. Sometimes <laughs> the, the floor is cold. Okay, Joe, Mr. Uh, introduced me to Million Dollar Extreme, which is on my little po- my little podcast notes here. Okay, okay. I mean, they're interesting, but yeah, there is an issue with them. All right, what do we want to talk about first? Because this is the first Noise Boys we've done in a hot minute. And this is the first one we've done with all three of us. So yeah. one of us should just shout louder than the rest to make sure that our opinion is overheard more mm. than the rest of us. Okay. Well, I can say... So uh, should we do I'm, three, two, one, go? <laughs> I'm going to fucking strangle you. So as I was fucking saying, uh, my fucking friend put a gun to my head and forced me to try new things. Because, you know, as Ted knows, that's how you get me to do anything, really. Uh, Alex has to be forced to do anything at all that he know that everyone except Alex knows he's going to enjoy. That's a lie. Like, hey, Alex, you should watch Yojimbo. Uh, that's a lie. That's a lie. That's a false narrative. That's, Joe knows about false narratives. He was put into a bad situation in that trial. All right. Listen, 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 listen. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. there I am minding my own fucking business. Right. And when my right mm-hmm. after Ted had this fucking my new anime arc with Tad, my friend out of fucking nowhere just says, hey, you guys. I want to watch Sumo on Twitch. And so I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I'll say yes to that. I'll do the yes man movie thing where instead of saying no, I'll say yes. So I was watching fucking Sumo the past fucking week. Holy fucking shit. Sumo's actually pretty legit if you guys actually like watch it. Like, I thought (laughs) Sumo was just fat men slapping each other. And I, I didn't know anything about it other than it was like the fat guys, right? But no, fucking Alex has opened my eyes to Sumo. I'm I'm a fan now. Now oh, okay. Alex will say, "Oh man, check out these sumo finals. They're literally at 1:48 in the morning, so I haven't fucking watched <laughs> it, them." It's but. like mm. afternoon for them. <laughs> it's on Japanese time. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's it's wild. Uh, you would not expect sumo to be as entertaining, and apparently, the the crowd in sumo is like, you know how there's that thing with um with British like football hooligans. I guess that's what sumo is in Japan. With a yeah. hit the bloody ball. Slap him! Slap him harder! Flip him over! Come yeah. on, Nippon! Yo! Whenever uh, the, like, a big wrestler loses, the, the Japanese just go over flipping at, like trains and stuff over because they don't have cars. So, <laughs> what do they do? I think that's true. I don't know enough about sumo. Yeah. <laughs> They'll just uh, throw malls, have cocktails in the vending machines. Because they don't have stores. <laughs> the vending machine. They get the Molotov cocktails in one vending machine, the lighter in the other. Uh, tell me more about how sumo works, Alex. I'm, right, I'm right, sumo right. So, interested. So, 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 so. Mm. Yeah, the, sim- the same setup is just, you know, two big fat dudes start putting the shit out of each other. The idea is either flip him over, you know, get him on his back or on his, like, knees or whatever, or knock him out of the ring. Those are, that's the wing condition. Hmm. Now, okay. there's a, the, it's, it's really simple, but there's so many fucking little strategies because it, it, it's over, like, an instant, Right. Some matches go on for a little while, but, like, especially in, like, the lower divisions, because they have, like, divisions. It's all, it's all segmented. That shit goes on, like, quick. You have the, uh, that's like, the Tachiya or whatever, which is the initial charge. What were you going to say? Oh, I was going to say, so is there a light, is there, like, a featherweight sumo division? So, hmm. I'm glad you asked. There isn't a weight class. It's skill-based and, like, win rate-based. So, I was just about to say... You can be a skinny guy in sumo. There's no, there's no rule that okay. says you have to be fat. It's just that being fat gives you an advantage because you're wider and harder to grab and heavier to, to move. So enter Enho, who's this like five and like four foot tall, like skinny guy. Well, skinny for a sumo, you know, skinny uh, guy who is actually pretty good. 
he used to be like an upper division guy, but he kind of lost a little. So he's like he's like a mid division guy now. But I showed you like like footage of him. What he does, he goes in fucking fast and tries to like flip him over from underneath and use their weight against him. It, it's fucking awesome. Everyone like fucking roots for him because he's the little guy. He's approaching yeah. it like it's a fucking boss fight. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I've got a question. Uh, how would they approach like a disabled like competitor, like someone in a wheelchair? They would. Like, what would you do then? They just just wouldn't <laughs> let you see him out. Okay. Okay. I understand. <laughs> he, puts, he just puts the locks in the wheelchair, and the match is over. Yeah. Well, I was thinking like one of those like Walmart scooters. <laughs> That's American. You know. You know. How there's American Ninja Warrior. <laughs> Yeah, American <laughs> sumo wrestling. <laughs> what, I, what I think is really cool, though, about learning about sumo and shit is that not only because it's just fun to watch these these, these two mastodons slammed against each other, <laughs> but also and, and learn all this this fucking like technique for this completely sport like this alien sport to me. But it's interesting as like a fucking stupid ass a fucking American seeing another country actually be cultured. Because like when you you don't just enter the sumo ring and then just like get your pose. You walk in there, do like this fucking mm. like dance and shit. Because it's like deeply rooted in their like mythology, so you have to do this thing. In fact, you're graded on it. At the end of every, because because they, they do the big sumo tournaments every two months. All right, so you have one month of cool down, you know, heal up, eat up, you know, get 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 ready. But at the end of every performance, even though you went like seven and like ten, you went negative. They'll still give you like a thumbs up and a little like medal for doing like the day, all the like the spiritual shit properly. It's like uh, your technique, mm. your fighting spirit, and like I think the other one was like bravery or whatever. How you handled like the charge, like you're you're graded on this shit. So like say uh, this is a guy named Tochi, who unfortunately like we all were rooting for him. He unfortunately did uh, go negative this this, this fucking uh, sumo thing, but he still got a bunch of awards for his fighting spirit because he because he fought really well. So he's so like the, the the guys who stand around the ring, they all still liked him. Shit like that. Yeah, there was yeah. a guy who went like one in thirteen this this month. It was really bad for him. But what I thought was really interesting is uh, at the end of every match, and when you get to the upper division, you are paid out. They just come over and give you a big stack of cash. And you notice this as the divisions and the, and the ranks are going up, that wad was getting significantly bigger. And the guy who won the whole thing got like a huge fucking stack of fucking dollars, like this fucking big. It was huge. You had to get a bucket. Yeah, yeah. And whenever you get the money, you have to, you have to kneel down and bless the money, and then you can take it. Because if you don't do that, they scold you for it. You don't get as much. It, it's so weird seeing all this thing. Like, just it's so weird seeing them just do all this fucking shit. What I like how is they, there's also there's dirty moves in sumo. There's a thing called the henka. It's a thing that people will boo you for. It's so there's this is the tachi out where they both jump into each other and, and bash into each other, right? Which, by the way, concussions happen a lot during that because you just fucking hit each other in the head like all the time. Oh yeah, you you just yeah. and during the initial charge, uh, sumo wrestlers, the good ones are in that one second as uh, faster than an Olympic sprinter. They put all their energy into one charge, and you might have noticed if you were, well, you probably weren't because it was at the two in the morning, but in the upper division, guys, the matches that go longer, you can see them noticeably get fucking tired because all their energy is in that, like, that burst because they're big fucking dudes, right? They're they're, they're to do this in, like, a minute, not, like, three. But the the henka is to step out of the way. The guy goes to the charge, you just move. Just, Just move and knock him down. It's a dirty yeah, tactic. Yeah. Nobody likes it, but it's not illegal. You can do it, but people aren't going to like you for it. And those guys, they ain't going to give you team spirit medals. Or they're going to give you fighting spirit <laughs> medals for that. And, uh, it, it sounds like sumo wrestling. It's kind of like uh, basically two turtles fighting. Like if they either get flipped on their back or knocked out of the cage, they lose. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> they're snapping turtles. Uh, in, in terms of the wrestling thing, I have something weird. It's not quite sumo wrestling, but it's something called CZW wrestling. And basically what this is, is it's wrestling where you try to inflict the most pain on your opponent's bodies as you possibly can. Uh, that sounds so you've got glass light tubes, uh, like thumbtacks all over the stage, barbed wire. I've seen people use uh, like uh, those hedge clipper things on each other. Not like shears, but like uh, the spinning like piece of wire. Oh, the, 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 the weed trimmers. The trimmers. The, yeah, 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 yes, yes. Yeah, I've seen that done. And yeah, people are just like taking handfuls of broken glass and just throwing them into their opponent's back and faces. Ooh. Um, I used to have a uh, backyard wrestling video game where you could play as the insane clown posse. Yeah, I know that fucking game. Sumo wrestling sounds like... Okay, you know how professional wrestling is now where it's like this kind of cool, like everyone goes in there and they do like their poses and they've got the, you know, the people's elbow and all that kind of shit. I am a Um, real American. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, John 316, he, he smashes the cold beers together and he beats his wife. <laughs> uh, it's um, 
it's like that, but for boomers, where, you know, like each time th- things get f- like escalated, right? OK, so a, a movie that is 40 years old, some aspects of it can be really boring to people now. And I imagine that's kind of what sumo is like, like at the like. I can imagine in like some traditional village in uh, Japan, the sumos come out and it's like the like the opening to Space Jam where it's like do 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 ah do 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 ah, and you know it's just like these dudes doing their doing their shit. Elmer Fudd has the basketball. <laughs> God, have you seen Space Jam in a while? Do you remember that part where he sits on Elmer Fudd? No, no. It's like that Squidward thing where he's got the, the, the butt cheek impressions on him. Oh, my God, that's horrible. That's sexual assault in a children's film. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I don't know if that actually happened in Space Jam, but I feel like it did. I think I think Elmer Fudd got sumo sat. But that's that's I, what I was I, saying is that I, I saw some fan art of Bugs Bunny stepping on Lola. And I was horrified <laughs> that they would put that in a child's movie. Bugs Bunny stepping on Lola with his big giant feet and her licking his toes. It was awful. Uh. Disgusting. I was morally outraged. Well, I was gonna say that I, once again I posted this at like one in the morning because so obviously everybody saw it right in the general chat yeah, of a yeah. fucking public Discord. Posted it in the <laughs> Discord only at one a.m. Yo, check out these <laughs> fat dudes slapping each other. I was gonna say what happens? Someone got fucking KO'd in sumo, fucking out cold. The uh, the guy flipped yeah. the other guy over. Guess. He hit the fucking ground hard and was just fucking face plant. Dead ass out cold for five entire minutes before medics uh, showed up to, to take care of him. Wait, five minutes? Yeah, so we were trying to that's... figure out why the fuck did that take so long to help this guy out, right? Because there's a lot of people around, right? Like, that's, this is like a big deal. <laughs> they were going to let him die because this fighter spirit wasn't high enough. No. Yeah, dishonorable. However, tradition was a, pro- was a big problem of it. Here's where tradition can be a problem. They needed to get a doctor to go check him out, but there was no doctor around that was male. There was a female doctor no. in the crowd, but a girl cannot set foot in the ring. But the match is over. A girl is not allowed to set foot in the, the big square uh, clay mat, to go, and she couldn't do it to go check him out. So they had to wait, call a male doctor to have him come over there. Absolutely. Which, by the way, well, here's another thing where they're just bad at medicine. They flip him over, put him on a thing, and then jack him away, which Ted knows a little bit about medicine. You don't do that yeah. to a guy who just got knocked out like that. And these are some big boys and yeah. and for those who i don't think we mentioned it yet you're like three feet up in the air on a clay on a clay mat and you 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 throw people off that mat and they fall sure, it, sure, sure. you fall sure. off that on like your neck or your leg and you're a you're a big boy that's it's much like yeah. your dad's ankles alex <laughs> they fall off this and pff, and they shatter. Oh, yeah, and you, yeah, you probably, you've seen this. Done. And you and anyone else who was watching, my, again, I posted it at 12 in the morning. Uh, you probably have all noticed that, that a lot of them have just, like, wrappings on, like, their shoulders and their, like, mostly their joints, like, their knees and their, like, ankles. Because those things get sore from just moving all that weight. But as Ted saw, they get thrown off that thing sometimes. So there's no, like, there's not a safety net there. That's just hard-ass wood they fall on. And, and uh... <laughs> It's traditional to make sure that our uh, our contestants get hurt as much as possible. Why? I'm I'm still hung up on this. Five you minutes. know <laughs> that you can't have a femoid because this is the most autistic fucking sport besides professional <laughs> wrestling. Bras will ruin the clay. It's tradition. Why would you even have a female doctor there then? Well, no, she, was, she was just know a, before. No, she wasn't like she wasn't hired there. She was she was just a doctor that just happened to be there watching the sumo thing because because this was upper division, so like everyone was there. Well, is it tradition that they just die? I don't understand. What's <laughs> tradition to be as much of a bitch as possible? Okay, another thing that I was wondering about is what you've noticed is too. Sometimes they like fall and stumble out of there far. Those they're just like old men sitting around like on their knees watching the ring. <laughs> One of them gets Elmer funded. <laughs> so luckily, nobody has died. However, one of the judges has broken his ankle from a sumo falling on top of him off of the ring. So it has happened. Yeah, yeah. And in the very finals of this like current like uh, you know big big wrestling event, uh, at the very end they were having a really long just just uh, 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 slap fest and like uh, they but before even that though before even that they had a really long prep time because you know they, they adjust their belt they slap the side of their belt they fucking throw the salt in the ring and shit mm. they do the, the dance <laughs> They were taking a yep. really long time because it was the finals. They were both kind of like, you know, worried about it. The judge was like, all right, hurry up. Come on, come on, come on. Hurry the fuck up. Come on, let's, let's do this. So they do the wrestling match. Some people think it might have been on purpose because they're getting pissed at the judge. But they grab one guy and throw the other and trip the judge. And the judge fell off and tumbled off of the fucking mat. 
Yeah, good, good. I, I don't I don't I don't cry whenever a judge gets taken down. <laughs> but unfortunately for that one sumo that was out cold, he is as of this current statement, uh temp- he's temporarily uh paralyzed. Mm, sure. Yeah. Yeah, in wrestling one time one time they had like a guy just on a rope and they were gonna like uh so like let him like just like kinda float into the ring. And they I snapped and he dropped sixty feet and died. I remember a specific old wrestler, a guy named uh, Vader. This is classic. A lot of people know this. And it's actually, there's footage of it, too. But it's zoomed out, so you can't really tell. Uh, It's like in the 80s or something. You might know the story, Joe. A wrestler named Vader got knocked in the face really hard, fell down onto the ropes, and they they were really tight and snapped back up at him and took out his eyeball. Mm. Okay, I haven't seen that. His eyeball was out of his head, and he like he like you can see this on like the footage. It's really old, but like it's again it's assumed out. It's like the '80s, but he, he's like adjusting his eye and putting it back into its socket, like holding his hand out like to stop the ring. <laughs> yeah, he puts yeah, it yeah. back in, and then goes back to the fucking fight. He just went back and finished the ring with this fucking busted up eyeball. What what is he like the fucking common writer dude that busted his leg and then duct taped it went back in <laughs> shattered his leg. <laughs> Listen, I don't think I would be a good sumo wrestler because you know what happened to me this morning? I woke up at six a.m. and my leg cramped. It cramped <laughs> because I'm not eating enough bananas. Okay, and I have been out of commission all day. It feels like there's a baby alligator biting onto my calf, and you know what? I'm just not ready for that level of stress. Yeah, yeah. I woke up at about. 11 o'clock, and the guy decided, no, that's a little bit too early for me. I'll just go back in bed, sleep till about 1. I woke up at 2 in the afternoon today. Yeah, sometimes I'll go to bed at 3 p.m. Sometimes I'll go to bed at 9 p.m. Sometimes I'll go to bed at 3 a.m. Sometimes I'll go to bed at 9 a.m. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah, no, there's no helping me. There's not even God can help me at this point in terms of my <laughs> sleep. Speaking of going to bed at 3 in the morning, hey, Alex, why did you stay up till 4 and 5 in the morning every day out of your work week? Oh, I was watching Super Wrestling and playing Skull, the Hero Slayer. Now, this fucking video game, I've been posting the, the video chat in the public Discord at 5 in the morning, so obviously everyone's been seeing it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, this fucking uh, indie game, let's talk about indie games, I guess, fuck it. Uh, it's oh. a little indie roguelike like, platformer game where you play as a little guy, a little skeleton named Skull, and you're, you're on like the bad guy side, uh, which I really like, because your little skeleton has to save the demons and shit. Uh, the gimmick is, is that you take your head off and replace it with another person's skull and you become that class. So like there's the werewolf class, the hunter, which is a little bow guy, a little shield guy, a little fucking like big swords guy, a summoner, a little warlock guy. You get the idea. It's really, really fun. And I've been so fucking hooked on it. I've been trying to get everyone like Matt because you can get the skulls and max them out. But, you know, they reset because it's, it's a rogue game. So you have to reset and get them them back up every time. Uh, I have beaten it. I've beaten it a couple times in a couple runs. I haven't upgraded the castle fully yet. I'm very close to that. But I really, really like it. It's really fucking hard, but it feels fair, unlike Rogue Legacy, which I hated that fucking game. Fuck Rogue Legacy. Mm. <laughs> I was okay with Rogue Legacy. Um, I thought, yeah, I was okay with it. Uh, I think I got the new game plus one and Ooh. grinded for a little bit. Um, I was okay with it. I thought it was an interesting concept. It was fun for a couple, like maybe 10 hours, 20 hours. I, I couldn't I maybe I'm just bad at video games and I think that might actually be the case because I died what was it seven hundred times in Cuphead it was three hundred like ninety six you're like a journalist in the opening level I am atrocious at video games it took me seventy four tries to beat Fume Night and Dark Souls two I, I'm one of the few people apparently that beat them though. I guess I just play it so much I understand what all of his attacks are. I'm not great at video games. Well, to, to be fair, Fume Night I, is that he was bugged on release where he had hitboxes like out of his ass. He was a real b- bitch in the fucking half. He was a piece of shit. Anyway, continue. Um, I'm not good at games. Uh, I was playing Ghost Runner. Well, last Noise Boys, I think Alex told me about it. And it was cool. It's a cool game. And every uh, level, you could see how many times you died compared to your friends. And it would be like, Tad died 24 times. Alex Four. <laughs> Listen, that, that spiral boss was really hard, okay? Okay, wait, <laughs> and that wait, was like the, the security thing. <laughs> fucking exactly. the, the 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 boss you had to spiral and go up the big the big thing that boss i had 196 times on that fucking boss <laughs> no, no, no. joe because i don't think you've played it dying is one hit it, it, you have one health okay so okay. so 196 means i just got hit 196 times yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not like i had a whole health bar and died that often it's like if i literally touch the fire with my ankle dead gotta restart right so that, that's why it's so high Fucking, 
Rogue Legacy, I think, is bullcrap, though. It's, it's older, though, so I guess I can't really be that harsh on it. But, like, Skull feels like the direct improvement of that game, because it's also, like, a platformer with the same thing. With Rogue Legacy, I hate that you can take damage from touching the enemies. You can't in Skull, so it's already way fucking better. Skull, Ooh, like, man. also, I noticed this is when I'm playing Skull. I thought the game looked kind of, like, familiar with its art style. And then I heard the cutscene, because there's voice acting in the, in the in-story cutscenes. It was in Korean. And I was like, oh, that's why. This looks kind of like Maple Story, <laughs> with like its sprite art style. Like when I played like the Reaper class, which is like a really rare skull. I the way he was animated, like the little like like the cloth like waves. I'm like, this looks kind of like Maple Story, like the way, and that's probably what they were inspired by because it was a South Korean dev. You know that that game's fucking huge over there. You know, yeah, yeah. So that's it's probably just an inspiration thing. But I with Rogue Rogue Legacy, I legitimately couldn't beat that game either. I'm like I'm actually on Tad's side, or I'm bad at video games with with Rogue Legacy. Well, I'm I'm a huge rogue like fan, so I'll play almost anything in the genre. I, I actually been gotten really into those as well, but just specifically Rogue Legacy, I did not like because there was this one specific moment where I knew that this game was poorly designed. I jump up into a floor, and there was a big heavy enemy on the platform where you jump up to. So I jump up, take thirty damage, and fall back down. I was like, "Yeah, this game sucks, doesn't it?" Uh, I don't know if any of you guys saw this. Um, Shovel Knight collabed with fucking arby's did you see yeah, this yeah yeah <laughs> there's codes that do different things one of them changes all the enemies into food types um like the rats turn into just like ham and cheddar and they're flying around by the way arby's fuck it sucks it's terrible food it's just like hey do you want <laughs> do you want just like sloppy slimy wet meat yeah i got you covered do you want to pay like eight bucks for it too yeah sure fuck it I have never had Arby's, fun fact. I have no idea what they have there. Also, I'm a professional I'm a I'm a professional podcaster. I had my fan on this whole time and forgot about it till just now, so I yeah. Oh we, my we, god. <laughs> you, are going going to, with it. you are going to kill me. <laughs> um, other Arby's things. Just keep Arby's, going. Arby's uh, you can get a you can get a cowboy hat for King Knight. Uh, there's one of them that replaces all instances of the word shovel and knight with meat. So oh, okay. it'll say like meat meat and shield meat. And it's just really, I don't know why Shovel Knight came out in 2000, like fucking 13. King of Cards is a year and a half ago. <laughs> if you go back and play just the normal Shovel Knight campaign, man, that feels it feels like going back to playing like Mega Man one after playing Mega Man X3. <laughs> fucking honestly, dude. Well, and uh, they put the wave dash, they put like the slide dash in Mega yeah. Man like two onwards. So whenever you play one, it just feels like broken garbage. I don't even think you can charge your shot. No, you can you you can charge until like four. Fun fact. Yeah. Speak, speaking of indie stuff, uh, the main reason we got Joe on here is hey. uh, me and Alex. I forced him at gunpoint to watch Yo Jimbo with me. And oh, uh, let me just ask you real quick, Alex, um, this thing that I had to uh, force you at gunpoint to do. Uh, did you enjoy it? Did you have a lot of fun watching this film? Hey, Joe, what's up? Hey, Dad. Uh, <laughs> Joe's, Joe's up? father just showed up on the street. Hi, Uncle Bob. I yeah. you were going to his house. No, 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 I'm podcasting. Tell Uncle Bob to say hi. Oh, they said hi. Hi, guys. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> um, but uh, I got Alex watch Jimbo, and then we were thinking about how different um, older films are compared to the more modern stuff so we thought you know what who do we know that pretends to know a lot about movies joe buckley <laughs> so mm. let's talk about um the differences between an old film a more recent film what what about it what's what is it that was in yo jimbo that made it so much more interesting than some of the average poo poo garbage stinky movies that have come out recently back in the day you would make you would make money making movies. I mean, now you make movies to make money. So, I mean, the, the movie itself is completely incidental. It doesn't matter. It might as well be fast food rappers to them. <laughs> it might as well be Arby's. <laughs> yeah. And what it is is basically um, all sense of auteurship is gone, which is where the director has control over his film. Um, all sense of, like, actually crafting a story is basically gone. It, it really, all it's about is make it as flashy and loud and big as possible. Market the hell out of it. Make sure the kids want to go see it and you're golden. Uh, I'm trying to think of the most uh, recent movies that I've been excited to actually see in the theaters. Uh, I'm ready yeah. to be disappointed 
by Godzilla vs. Kong. I went and saw okay. King of Monsters with my nephew, and he got so bored that in the middle of the movie he went, I'm bored. Where's Godzilla? Hey, I was like, you know yeah, what, yeah, Lennon? Yeah. I cannot argue with that. Let's leave. Yeah. <laughs> Average Godzilla fan. <laughs> but uh, Yojimbo... Uh, Alex pointed this out to me, is that there were a few scenes where he would have like 40 people on camera. Yeah. And I was trying to think, when the hell did that happen most recently? And I guess the only case of it happening was like that one scene in Avengers Endgame where you had everyone like in a group and they were running. And mm. that was like the, the only time it happened in, I don't know, 10 years yeah. of cinema history. That is the Marvel I mean movies. I, don't, I shouldn't say it like, like that. Uh, I shouldn't say it with the quotes because that makes me sound like like I got my head up my ass. It's, uh, it is. Well, you you said like Martin mystery. Scorsese. You sound like someone who cares about movies. Is the issue? <laughs> is the issue that most people take up with you? Um, I mean, I think I've seen the crowd shot in like maybe like a Spider Man movie where like the people have to say like Yay Spider Man. <laughs> yeah, but like, and then there's like 40 well, people there, and they give them a thumbs up. What I'm curious about those group shots, though, is like, and I was telling Tyler tell about this when I was watching. Uh, uh, I worked, someone just had grit on, which is just a TV show, a channel that just streams cowboy movies endlessly. Because I guess there's enough <laughs> cowboy movies and yeah. shows to have a whole fucking channel oh, that can do it. But yeah, you'll never run out. There was a, there was a, there was a shot, and this is I don't even remember what movie it was. It, it was just one of them. It was just on when I, was at, when I went to go to break. But they're like gonna hang these like two cowboys, and it specifically shows like this huge like group of people from the town coming to watch. And I'm thinking to myself, because this is like a movie from like maybe like, the '60s or '70s or whatever. I'm like, they actually have all those actors there. I specifically was thinking about this one thing in the new newer Lord of the Rings movie, The Hobbit, where uh, you, you, you've all seen this. I guess post all time where Gandalf's actor, whose name I'm, I'm forgetting off the top of my head, Ian McKellen. Yeah, yeah, where he was sitting there in the little green screen talking to the green screen, like, puppets of the, who are supposed to be the hobbits, and he just starts, just puts his hands in and starts, like, crying. Yeah, he, yeah. He, he just starts to, like, break down and says, this is not what I, you know, became an actor for. Well, I was thinking, like, the two, like, things right there. I was thinking between an actual shot on location with, like, 40 just random extras and the, and the actual actors versus one actor in a box... With a and that's just completely painted fucking green with a cutout of fucking like Frodo's head in the background on one of the little like <laughs> puppets. I mean, the one of the biggest issues is uh, every decade editing gets faster, the shots get quicker. If you would, if you go back and look at like a film from the 1950s, 60s, an average shot would probably last you maybe 30 seconds, and like sometimes you'd have long shots where it lasts for four minutes, sometimes you'd have a five second shot in there. Now, you really don't go over two seconds a shot. Yeah, you. It's very rare that you get uh, Agent Dale Cooper laying on the ground and, I know you. <laughs> I know you're you. You're the guy. <laughs> two and a half minutes. <laughs> and, no, ten minutes. And people were disgusted and stopped watching Twin Peaks after that. Twin Peaks died at season two, episode one, <laughs> in terms of the mass market appeal. Oh, uh, and yeah, it's because Dale Cooper was bleeding for 10 minutes on the floor, almost dying. And he had an out-of-body experience, and it was cool, it was surreal, all kinds of things were happening. And people tuned out, they didn't care. Yeah. No, I actually wanted to say one more thing. Another thing with uh, with, with older movies was uh, effects, too. Now, this is just me. I have told this that I kind of like the practical effects a lot. Like, I talked to him about, like, Tremors and shit. I watched, like, when I was younger with my stepbrother. I love the puppets and shit. And like, I don't, normally I'm, I'm scared of sc uh, spooky movies, but like the thing and Tremors, I'm not scared of because I just think I think the puppets are just cool as shit, right? I I, I can for whatever reason dis dis disconnect myself in those situations for whatever reason. But but but, but I was watching The Invisible Man on Sven Gulli, which by the way, when I watched Sven Gulli, I told Ted this guy kind of reminds me of Joe. <laughs> uh, that's what we were uh, going for with the Benevolent Buckley show, a Svengoolie like type horror host, uh, Elvira, like all of those kind of people, and just take that and give him a late night show. Yep. Yeah, and from, uh, from the like, from the two whole episodes of Svengoolie I, I caught on break at work, I kind of like it more than Mystery Science Theater 3000 because it's a little less obnoxious. <laughs> because when you go from like, oh, it's Noxious. funny, they're, quip they're, they're quipping at the movie, that's kind of cute. Yeah, all right, they're ripping on it. Versus Van Gooley just showing you the movie and only coming in to, like, to do his little jabs before and after commercials, it's a lot less intrusive. I actually <laughs> like that setup a little more, but that's just me. That That's my, that's my you know, little opinion from just watching a, a little of it. But anyway, he was, he was watching The Invisible Man. 
And what I like about the Miserable Man is you can tell, because they didn't have like the, the effects we did, they were really up their own ass when they did it, have the ability to make a guy <laughs> invisible, right? So like they would have these shots of him like taking off the thing, and they would specifically like have him like still like having like one thing of clothing on, so you're like, oh yes, look, it's he's really still there. Ooh. You yeah, can yeah, tell yeah. these Here, shots. Just let me put on my lipstick before I go out. Let me just slowly undress <laughs> myself while still wearing it. And like his wife like faints when he sees him, like dig this thing off. He's like, honey, he, he without his head or like half of like his like shirt on. On, but the rest of him still moving and invisible. It's like, honey, are you okay? And shaking him. You know that that shot was just there just to flex their fucking effects, yeah. you know? But there was oh, one yeah, shot yeah. I genuinely think is a good fucking shot, even like by like modern standards. And I know for a fact if he was just wearing like a like a like a, like a, like a thing, right? But what they did is that uh, the guy he they just went out to kill some guy who framed him. That, 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 that's what he was after. And the guy's like run away, like the cops find him. He's like, please you have to help me. The invisible man's after me. He's like, oh don't you worry there, buddy. He's like, whew, blowing smoke around. He's like, the invisible man's not gonna find you. I mean, after all, we got him whew, and he blows smoke to the left and you see the invisible man like in the smoke. He's like, yeah. we got him right here! And he's like just fucking like starts fighting the fucking invisible man. <laughs> I love the shot of him just blowing smoke looking for him. Because like, you, you tell immediately what he's what he's doing. You just see his just like the head silhouette in the smoke that looked really fucking cool for like the fucking sixties. I like it. I miss those effects. Yeah, the biggest thing with practical effects is anything they shot was actually on camera at the time, and they had to work in motion outside of claymation, which was done uh, frame by frame, so you could build whatever you wanted. But any kind of practical effect would actually be working on the day as you did it. And basically, we are, we're about 25 years, no, sorry, 30 years in the digital effects, and we still can't get good-looking blood. It's, but it's they, the, the, the lighting. It's, it's shadows and that kind of stuff. I mean, if you spend an inordinate amount of time on, on one thing, it can look good. Like, Golem from Lord of the Rings still looks, he doesn't look amazing, but he still looks convincing. Well, he's a creature. But, I mean, the biggest issue is, for $100, you can get several gallons of good, high-quality blood. But the reason why they don't do that is because it messes up the set. You gotta get someone in to mop it. Uh, the actor gets sticky for a couple minutes. <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio refuses to get sticky. He's not doing it yeah, again. Yeah, why not? In, instead of spending the 100 on the blood and doing it on the day, you could spend $500,000 to make crappy blood instead with your computers. $500,000 to make crappy blood on a computer. Oh, I was going to say, you can use it on the, like, Clash of the Titans. They had the old 60s one. I think it was Harry something Hauser, right? Hauser, Harry yeah, Van yeah. Hauser. Yeah. Something like that. Um, he did a lot of yeah, effects does. that around that time was like the first time. Well, maybe not. I don't know. Very, very early in those kind of effects. The, yeah, the they sea used, monster They used stuff. like claymation in like 19, 20, 30 movies. Like King Kong was a big claymation monster mm -hmm. movie. They mm -hmm. used claymation before. He was the one who made it look really good and really real. It, he, uh, he had his own style. Um, The owl. That was in Clash of the Titans as well, right? The metallic owl. The clockwork one. That might be the 80s Clash. Because there's be. 60s Clash, 80s Clash, new shitty Clash. Because the 80s and the 60s ones, um, the 80s ones, from what I remember, was not bad. It was, it was, I it was not bad. It. I haven't seen it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the 60s one is where you have the, the, the Kraken that shows up and it's like all green and it's all looking weird and reflecting. And they, they got the, the room on Mount Olympus where you have all these funky light shows and stuff and everything looks... It's a set, but... It's just, it's shadows and lighting, just like in video games. You can have a game yeah. that came out in two thousand uh, Dead Space. Dead Space still looks good. You could compare yeah, yeah. Dead Space to fucking uh, Cyberpunk, <laughs> and it would still look pretty pretty yeah, okay. Still, it yeah. wins. Yeah, I mean, Crisis almost nothing compares to Crisis from uh, yeah, two thousand seven. Yeah. Another Just game. because I got, like, the lighting and ray tracing and shit, shit so good. Another game that actually has really good lighting that still holds up that's even older from 2005, Prey. Yeah, yeah, mm. Prey. Yeah, people say Prey's real nice. It's it's all about, uh, and Dead Space was able to cheat it a little bit because it wasn't, yeah, like, a big open like, area. Yeah, everything's, pre-done. Yeah, because it's not an open world. Everything, it's a, it's a maze that you're going through. So they're able to set up everything nice. And because it's so many, Dead Space is mostly corridors. You know, just like Final Fantasy 13 and all those, you kind of know what angles people are going to be looking at things from um, when it's a big, more open world. It's sometimes harder to do. Like I even saw this in Half-Life Alex 
And I could tell that they tried not to let me look at things at weird angles, but Half-Life Alex, I could have the stupid VR headset on and I could look underneath tables and like the front of the table is modeled and there's nothing behind it. And there's like cracks yeah. in the ground that were just like invisible and stuff. Um, anyway, I get a little get a little off topic here. Well, we're we're still so far away from photorealism, and I mean that goes for CGI in movies as well. I mean, even now, like the best looking stuff, normally there's a little thing in the back of your head that goes, "I know I'm looking at a video game." Basically, mm-hmm. I mean, I, um, I know that this is a cartoon in a movie. Uh, Monster Hunter. I saw that recently, uh, which, by the way, could finally join that elite pantheon of good video game movies monster hunter was surprisingly good i here's what i thought monster hunter was going to be based off of every other video game in existence that's not fucking mortal Kombat. (laughs) is uh the premise of monster hunter was uh a uh american military squad in uh the middle east okay already not (laughs) not starting off strong I assumed the first hour and a half of this two hour long movie was going to be them in the desert. But within 15 minutes, every single one of them die except the main character girl. And then she's like captured by spiders and you're just already in there. And it was very schlocky and very kind of cheesy. It was surprisingly good. I I was shocked. I need to watch the Rampage movie. Did you know that they made a Rampage movie, Alex? I heard about it, but I never got around to seeing it. I fucking, you remember Rampage? That game was fucking sick back in the day. I had that shit on N64, dude. Apparently, it's very, like, schlocky and cheesy, which is good. Like, the dude's, like, it's, like, you know, there's the lizard, the gorilla, and then the wolf. There's Ralph, Lizzie, and whatever, George. Bourdain. Anthony Bourdain. Yeah, Anthony Bourdain. And um, he's, like, the monkey is giant, but he's still, like, bros with him. So, like, he fucking fist bumps him at one point and shit. I, I gotta watch it. I, I love schlocky, lighthearted kaiju bullshit. Which yeah. never fucking happens because for dumb, stupid American movie audiences, we have to have these epic fight scenes that take 90 percent of the budget. So Godzilla is only on screen for fucking 45 minutes out of a three hour movie because I'm legendary pictures and I just want to shit out of Godzilla. Movie. I hate it. I hate it. I can't stand yeah. kaiju shit. It's almost mm-hmm. like it's intended for literal children. I love kaiju shit. I fucking hate kaiju shit. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, uh, yeah, no, I was I was going to say, like, uh, Silent Hill was probably going to be the only good video game movie, and then the studio yeah. just fucked with it. Mortal Kombat is, and I know this is not like a, this is not a fucking hot take, that the Mortal mm. Kombat movie still holds up and is still very funny, <laughs> it's still very enjoyable. It's cinema. Well, what yeah, ha- well what's, good about, uh, what's good about Mortal Kombat, though, is Mortal Kombat was kind of already in a position where, like, Back in the day, Mortal Kombat was one of the few games that actually kind of focused on its story a little bit more. And it was already mm-hmm. using yeah. actors and shit for its things. So there isn't as big of a disconnect when you go into the movie. Like when I see, you know, actor Johnny mm-hmm. Cage uppercut somebody, and then I see movie actor Cage uppercut somebody, I'm like, oh yeah, same thing. Right? It still <laughs> works. Monkey for sees you. action. Ooh. <laughs> also, I like how Mortal Kombat is now mostly like a movie thing, and NRS just makes movie games now with their, that are also fighting games with that and Injustice. I mean, it works. I yeah. Well, I mean, there's there's seven Resident Evil movies. There might be more movies <laughs> than games. I don't know at this point. Fuck it, dude. I don't. Even, okay, I saw like the first Resident Evil one when they were in the big like underground facility, which wasn't even like that accurate to the first game anyway. I remember seeing that. I did not know there were so fucking many. It's are the characters from the game well, other than Wesker even in the fucking movies? I know Wesker's in it. I've seen I've seen him throw his fucking glasses yeah. and shit. He's in there. Uh, here's like, the here's the interesting thing. George A. Romero originally wrote the script for the first Resident Evil movie, and they just threw it away. They said it was garbage. Oh, uh, they took yeah. the Godfather of Zombies and said the script wasn't good enough for their video game movie. He doesn't know anything about zombie movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's never made one, I bet. But let's uh, let's talk about the other thing that uh, I want to talk about: the Snyder Cut. Now, Joe, yeah, this is like there. a weird. Would you say this is like a big movie cinema thing, or is this something that I just simply wasn't aware of as happening as often as it does? Director's cuts come out all the time. What normally happens is sometimes as a director, you have what's called final cut. That's very, very rare. But it says that once you cut a picture that you're liking, the studio cannot change it. It's in your contract. That's your cut. Can't fuck with it. It's extremely rare. Only a handful of directors get Final Cut. Uh, David Lynch is one of them. Wes Anderson. Um, uh, David Fincher is a big one. He demands Final Cut because he did Alien 3, and the studio fucked it into oblivion. They started shooting it without a script. 
Hmm. Um, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, they just needed to make Alien 3 right away. Um, but then if you don't have Final Cut, the studio can basically come in and demand any kind of changes they want, like to the pacing, uh, to the narrative, but sometimes they'll throw the director a bone after the fact and you can release a director's cut on Blu-ray then. Um, so a lot of director's cuts are, it's like 20 more minutes of footage maybe, you get more character expansion, you get more thematic world building... It's basically all the shit they chopped out so that they could put the movie in two-hour blocks instead of two-and-a-half-hour blocks for the theaters. Because you make one more showing that way. Oh, yeah, yeah, shit. That actually does make sense. One of the things I've noticed about this whole movie cut thing, though, is uh, we were saying, reminded me what happened to uh, Suicide Squad. I don't know if any of you guys saw Suicide oh, yeah. Squad, but that had a lot of issues because the people they hired to edit wasn't, like, an actual movie editor. It was a trailer company. So the movie... Is shot and edited like a trailer. So then the director yeah, had to release yeah. a different cut to then do the other. There, there are like three whole cuts of that movie that are all like, apparently, I haven't seen all three cuts. So, you know, well, and I know, the but... Suicide's cut has never been released officially. Uh, hmm. the, there's only the theatrical cut. Director's cut will never be seen, DC says. And white guy James Gunn is working on a remake of Suicide Squad to a movie that came out three years ago. Huh. And that just got done filming. Yeah, but the, uh, as Joe already knows, that movie got fucked behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah. So there's yeah. allegedly, like, just three different movies. I mean, what happened with that was a director shot a movie, and then they cut a trailer for it, and the trailer was real fun and colorful and snappy, and people liked the trailer so much that they thought, okay, let's take uh... the movie we have and make it into the trailer. Yeah, and uh, so you just have, like, a whole movie that wasn't shot to be edited like that, and it has no thematic reason to be like that. There's nothing in the actual editing that would suggest it's like that. And you just chop it up to fit your needs, and then you just make a completely botched abortion of a movie that's two halves of something that don't connect at all in the middle. So you just have two halves of a movie Frankenstein sewn together, and no one watches it, basically. So just like now the Snyder cut, me and Joe, I dragged him to see the Justice League because we were going to do a uh, we were going to do a best boys on it. And then we never did. So I just made him actually uh, that movie left a permanent mark on me because I wore my uh, Chinese knockoff shirt where it says, you know, uh, 1998. I am trash man. Kill all cops. 410 billion. Whatever. I I wore that shirt. Now it permanently has a giant grease stain on it from Mm. how disgustingly nasty that popcorn was. Was was that that? Oh, I was going to say, was that the time the rat touched your feet in the theater? Oh, my God. Yeah, I think it was. There was a rat in the movie theater? Oh, yeah. The one I worked at. Yeah. Joe does this thing. Anytime he's given a microphone, he has to talk about how he hates his old job and how he... (laughs) How badly people treat me and how I should be respected (laughs) and how I'm a big man. I'm a big man on campus. And how he pirates movies and he'll just shout about, oh, I pirated movies. Here's my pirated movies. You want my plex? Here's my pirated movies. (laughs) No more of that, Joe. Tell me about the Snyder Mm. Cut. What happened? Tell me about this Justice League. Because I watched the movie and you watched the movie and we don't remember. And I don't remember a thing that happened. I I may have not watched this movie because it's gone from my mind. I don't know anything about Justice League. I think the Martha thing wasn't even in Justice League. I think that was Batman versus Superman where it's like, why'd you say Mothra? Hmm. Why'd you say Martha? I I don't remember who Martha was. I don't know what that is. Is that a grandma? Is that a mother? (laughs) She's the queen of the monsters, Joe. Is it a type of cookie that they sell in the movie? Martha's Cookies? Could but be. maybe Batman eats? I don't know. Batman doesn't okay. eat. Batman just beats up criminals. So basically, uh, uh, Justice League, I had no interest in the movie itself, but I was looking <laughs> at the Wikipedia, and basically this is like a prime example of how badly a studio fucking with a movie can ruin everything. Okay, so basically, in pre-production, this is all the way back in 2007... They hired uh, two people to write the script for Justice League. Uh, same time, Joss Whedon's Wonder Man Woman was canceled, and then it was going to be called Justice League Mortal. Uh, so they liked the script, and they were going to fast track it into production, but the writer's strike was going to be happening around the same time. Hmm. So they were basically just like, hey, let's try to film it as fast as possible. Let's go. Let's go, people. Uh, basically, Superman Returns had just bombed, so they didn't get that guy back to be Superman. And they didn't get Christian Bale from Batman to be in it. Now, uh, Superman Returns, actually, they had, uh, was it Superman Returns or Man of Steel, where they actually filmed a portion of it near where me and Joe live. Um, oh, it was like yeah. a school bus. There was a school bus over a bridge um, yeah. early on in the movie, and they filmed it. Um, and then there was also a yeah. scene where there's like a brick wall in Smallville that's like got like a, a American flag painted <laughs> across it. 
And that's that's yeah. from a nearby town. I think Marseille's. Yeah, they dumped a bus in the drink. I saw it go in the drink. Uh, but yeah, yeah go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Okay, so uh, they basically intended Mortal to become the start of a brand new franchise. Uh, they were going to get George Miller, the Mad Max guy, to direct. Uh, but then they let the strike happen, and they let all the actors they had already picked out move on to other projects. Uh, so the Dark Knight happens in 2008. And it does gangbusters. It does amazing for them. Uh, everybody lauds, like, the the uh, Heath Ledger gets nominated for, like, every Oscar that exists. So they decide, okay, we're going to put this on the back burner. We're going to let him do Dark Knight Rises. And we're going to make a brand new solo Green Lantern film. Oh, didn't that happen? And it was fucking atrocious. <laughs> I saw that movie. Yeah, Did not like yeah. that movie. Uh, so then their separate movies, The Flash and Wonder Woman, just kind of languish, and then they were filming the Superman reboot, Man of Steel. Uh, so basically, they wrestled the legal rights away from the creator of Superman, which is Joe Shuster. Uh, they were able to rip that away from his estate, so they got the full rights to Superman. And then they were going to move ahead with Justice League. So they hired a brand new writer to write the script for a new Justice League, and then they decide Man of Steel will be uh, basically the Man of Steel is going to be the brand new universe, not Superman Returns. Uh, oh, and then he, they stated that Green Lantern could appear in a future installment, but it will be a rebooted version of the character. Oh, boy. Unconnected to the 2011 film. <laughs> OK. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm excited so, for this. Us, us lanternies, as we call ourselves in our community. Us, yes. us uh, eternally disappointed ease. <laughs> yeah. So with the release of Man of Steel in 2013, a brand new writer, Goyer, was hired, hired to write it. With uh, Berlin's draft being thrown out the door, this is three scripts of Justice League at this point. <laughs> and, Good sign. Yeah. Good sign. Uh, in 2014, it was reported that Zack Snyder would direct uh, Goyer's Justice League sh- sh- uh, script. But uh, Warner Brothers hired Chris Terrido to rewrite it the following July. And then they announced that it would actually be two movies, with part oh. one on November 17th, 2017, and part two announced but release date not confirmed. Uh, so then they confirmed that the script had been cre- uh, completed by Terrio, so this is four scripts now at this point for one movie. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, Zack Snyder, then, um, isn't he the guy that did 300? Yes. Okay, 300 yeah. is actually really cool. Battle of Thermopylae yeah, and all yeah, that. Yeah. That movie, that very, movie's not historically accurate, but very stylish and well, cool. Well, the, the point of that movie is to is to not be accurate. It's supposed to be a, like... <laughs> it's supposed to focus on the romanticization, the romanticization of storytelling. That's why the ending shot of the movie is the guy telling like the other Spartans around a campfire the story of the 300. The entire point is propping it the fuck up and making it sound super cool yeah. and epic when it really wasn't. That, that was the whole point. That's the, the point of that movie. But also, uh, when you're telling me, Joe, of everything that happened with Zack Snyder right now, all, all this, these four scripts, it's reminded me of what happened with the Super Mario Brothers movie. Because that movie also mm. had, like, three different entire scripts, where the original one was supposed yeah. to be a fun, like, adventure through the Mushroom Kingdom, and that's what all the actors signed up for. And then the third Make script... Darker. Make it grittier. With a third script, because Nintendo liked that. For, did you know that? They said that to Nintendo, they're like... Yeah, it sounds fucking awesome. Because this is before, you know, Mamma Mia. This is before the GameCube era where Miyamoto became the the king of the no fun police. This is back when they like to like experiment with mm. things. They don't do that anymore, obviously. You know, yeah, they, yeah, they, this yeah. is a oh, is that an original character in my Mario? <laughs> fucking yeah, is that a ROM from a thirty year old game you've got on your computer? Internet jail for you. <laughs> Is someone making Mario sixty four online for everyone to play and have fun and laugh? How dare you! But. But but this is all reminding me of just like like I signed up for this movie. Well, you're getting this movie now. Sorry. <laughs> like cool thanks. Anyway, continue, continue. Okay, I'm so sorry. Snyder. Yeah, yeah, I'll go. Yeah, uh, Snyder states that they're going to be two separate, completely different films, and not one film split into two parts, both being standalone. So we get into filming. Uh, Snyder's longtime cinematographer Larry Fong was replaced by uh, somebody else. Do the scheduling. Uh, basically, in uh, 2016 of May, it was revealed that they were going to produce Justice League films. And they would be, uh, basically, they were doing the DC Extended Universe. And then after the largely negative critical reception of Batman v Superman, uh, basically, they need to make the Justice League storyline more linear and simple. And uh, we need to lighten it up a bit. We need to make it hopeful and op- op- optimistic. Justice League, uh, from what I can understand with all the DC stuff, is they're like, oh, 
well, we can't make movies as good as like Disney and Marvel, I guess. So let's just go the opposite and make edgy adult superheroes because people really liked Batman uh, Dark Knight Rises. And then no one liked seeing Superman kill someone. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Man of murder. Yeah, man of murder. (laughs) Snapping Zod's fucking neck. Yikes. Yeah. Uh, So in May of 2017, Snyder has to leave the film because his daughter killed herself. Oh, but there's there's rumors that he was going to get fired anyway. Uh, There's a lot of talk that uh, Warner Brothers hated what the footage he was showing them. Hmm. Uh, So they hire Joss Whedon, the guy who originally his Wonder Woman film got shelved by them. He becomes the director. Uh, The film's going to undergo two months of reshoots and Warner Brothers is going to put twenty five million dollars into reshoots which is about four times as much as a typical $6 million reshoot cost. Okay. So they're just dumping money. They're they're putting it all on black for this. Yeah, yeah. And that's going to come back to bite them in a little bit. Black because it's dark and brooding and edgy. Like the people yeah, really want to see. Because I like Deadpool. I like yeah. funny, silly humor in my People really want movies. Justice League to be dark and like edgy. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Mm. So the big thing, the big thing that the internet picked up from uh, the, this was that basically the actor for Superman had a mustache for Mission Impossible Fallout, and he was contractually obligated to keep his mustache. <laughs> uh, so the Mission Impossible director basically gave them the go-ahead, okay, uh, you can shave it, but Justice League will have to pay us $3 million in order to digitally fill the mustache in. <laughs> Uh, but exec- executives from Paramount did not like that idea and rejected it. So Justice League was forced to use uh, digital effects to remove the mustache. It looks weird. It looks like his <laughs> lip is like bending over his teeth. <laughs> if yeah. you've ever seen it, there's like a bunch of images I compare it. It looks fucking weird. Uh, well, like I said, I saw it, but I can't remember. It's like um, uh, there was that uh, that Breaking Bad movie that was on Netflix, El Camino, and uh, they got. The, the guy, the, the dad from Malcolm in the Middle, come back for a scene where they're, where him and Jesse are in the bar. It's the one where okay. it's like, yeah, you know, I'm talking about, you know, Mr. White. Yeah, you know, like the, the trad wife cottage core neocons. Jesse, what the mm. hell are you talking about? <laughs> if you look closely. Jesse, you can say things like that on Reddit. If you look closely, uh, he's just wearing a bald cap because he wasn't going to shave mm. his head again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a big pain. Oh, yeah, uh, so, speed, speed it up, Joe. Come on. You tell me about movie okay, directors. Okay. I don't care about that. That shit. That shit. Okay. Dumb. Well, I think it's interesting. Uh, Whedon gets a screenwriting credit. Snyder gets the sole director's credit. So in an interview, a producer says, let's say 80, 85% of the movie is what's originally shot. Snyder says only a fourth of his material was used in the cut. Mm -hmm. Cinematographer estimates that only 10% of the original footage shot by him and Snyder was used in the final cut. And Whedon's rewrites were about 80 pages, confirming that the theatrical cut was mostly his new material. Okay. Uh, the Warner Brothers CEO demanded that the film be under two hours, <laughs> and uh. the company also did not want to de- delay the film's release, despite the fact that there had been numerous problems in post productions, so that the executives would receive their cash bonuses before the company's merger with AT and T. Jesus. Yeah. Uh, Superman was intentionally left out of all early Justice League marketing materials, including trailers and posters, which the actors thought was ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, despite his character being hidden, uh, he still joined the rest of the cast on the film's press tour. <laughs> and then Clark Kent was revealed in a final trailer before the release of the film, but edited in the way that writers felt Lois Lane was dreaming about Clark. <laughs> okay, so this movie ended up grossing $650 million, up against a production budget of $300 million. Oh, so they, they still... Ugh. No, no, no. The studio estimated that they need to make $750 million to even get in the black. Oh. So, uh, yeah, they reported that the film lost about $60 million. Uh, Only $60 million? I, $650 million at box. Oh, yeah, that is... Because this was worldwide, so that's... In, well, it yeah. probably didn't go to China. But still, that's... That's, exact, that's essentially half an uh, avatar. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. And it still lost money. And you did half an avatar of success, the most successful film ever made, and you still lost money. <laughs> I think, is that more than Titanic made? Because Titanic was like uh, a big deal. Avatar, I feel like that's more. <laughs> Titanic was like in theaters for like basically a year. Um, whenever you adjust your inflation, nothing beats Gone with the Wind. Because Gone with the Wind was in theaters for like three years and everybody was depressed because of all the dust in the air. 
So they were just, yeah, everybody went to go see Gone with the Wind all day. The dust in the <laughs> air. Um, was this... I, uh, the, the dust bowl. I oh, don't know. Uh, I was about to say, I'm like, Joe, is this like a 9-11 thing? What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, 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 about? the towers fell again, yeah. Pearl, no, uh, that was Lord Hall. of the Rings. Lord of the Rings oh, is 2001, okay. 2002, 2003. People wanted a, uh, they wanted a little bit of an escape. And it was mm. also a very fantastic film trilogy. And I'm scared to get the 4K version because I'm afraid that everything's not going to look that good. And that's going to scare yeah, me. Yeah. I feel like Golem or the troll are going to look <laughs> bad and that's going to, it's going to terrify me. I want my Lord of the Rings to remain special. Okay. I understand. I'm basically, I consider myself like the tree folk. Like I just want the forest to be nice and safe. I just want to lay in my bed. I don't want people touching my magic cards. Yep. And if they touch my magic cards, I'm going to pop them. Yep. Yep. Joe, yep. they call you anchor arms, Joe Buck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So basically, this is a film that was basically pulled in every single direction that a film could be pulled in. And uh, they ended up sinking so much money into it that they ended up losing money <laughs> after making basically all the money that they could. But then what's up with the Snyder Cut? Why even release that then? Is it just because they were that desperate to get more money out of it? So uh, the fans campaign, they demanded to see the Snyder Cut. Uh, basically, Snyder couldn't even watch the movie in theaters. Uh, Christopher Nolan told him, don't watch it, you'll be too sad, don't ever watch this, and so he hasn't, uh, but, uh, so basically the fans were campaigning, hey, you guys gotta release this Snyder Cut, and they went on for years, and then finally in 2020, uh, Snyder's like, hey, look what I found, and it's just reels, it's canisters of film, and it says Snyder Cut on them, <laughs> so, uh, basically they spent another 70 million dollars, oh. uh, to go back in, yeah, uh, they reshot uh, a couple scenes, but they say that it's probably only about five minutes of new material. And they turned that into a four-hour movie. Um, it's uh, it's also in open mat, so basically it's a taller movie than most people are used to. Mm -hmm. But it, it looks almost like an old TV. It's like a square. Four by three, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. Now, do you know... So the Snyder Cut, he took all of this footage that they ripped and tore away, mixed and matched it, made it into this big four-hour movie. The Joker says we live in a society, but I guess apparently unironically. Mm. No, they cut that yeah. out. They, 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 we did the Snyder Snyder Cut now. I get that back in. <laughs> the society cut. He removed basically everything we didn't had shot, so that's all gone. Okay. Now, do you know if this made money now? Did this finally make them money? Because I know it's on HBO Max. Yeah, basically with that kind of stuff, with those things, like, basically, it's a loss leader. So, basically, every single year, YouTube loses money for Google. Every single year, Amazon loses money for... What you're trying to do is build up a base so that way you can make money later. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it made money for HBO Max, but that's not re really their goal at this point. Their goal is to get as many subscribers to HBO Max as they can. That does make sense. I mean, if I was yeah. interested in the Snyder Cut, I would be like, you know what? Yeah, I'll pay for the, I'll pay for this. Just like, um, when, uh, Twin Peaks season three came out, a lot of people yeah, paid Showtime. for the Showtime, st the Showtime plus stuff or whatever. And yeah. then, I mean, I imagine after a few months, you know, most, yeah, there was no more Twin Peaks. So it's not like I want to yeah. watch like, uh, I don't know, uh, the Romans, there was a Roman show on there that was like yeah. Game of Thrones, but not, you might, um, what they're probably betting on is that people who get in here, let's say you get 1 million people who subscribe for that month. It's like a expansions in World of Warcraft where uh, they have an expansion and they justify it by people who get in this expansion are probably going to play mm, three months, three, four months. OK, you get that upfront yeah. cost of like, like how Disney Plus does it, where you pay 30 fucking dollars <laughs> on top of your uh, subscription to watch a new movie. Mm -hmm. But then people get on there and out of the million that come in there. You're hoping that like 200,000 of those are going to stay yeah. and go, you know what? I like this service. And then they stay on there for six, seven months, however long. And then you keep getting keep getting that money in just like these WoW subscriptions. Well, you get people back in here with these expansions and you just kind of keep them in there for longer and longer, longer. New one comes out. Big boost. A lot of people drop off. But your goal is to keep growing every time you do it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And like with HBO Max, like they they're throwing up like hundred million dollar movies the same day they premiere in theaters on their uh max service so like you got like godzilla versus kong you got mm -hmm. space mm -hmm. jam coming up suicide squad uh dune and then new matrix what is your feeling on gonna... um what's your feeling on dune joe because i know the first dune was gonna be it was going to be a david lynch movie and then they took the movie away from him 
Yeah, and oh, the same exact thing that happened with Stuart, with uh, Justice League, basically. I mean, the very first Doom was going to be by Alejandro Jodorowsky, who's basically a crazy Spanish guy who does weird art house films, and he was going to make the ultimate Doom film. He did um, The Holy Mountain, which is a yes, movie I was going to yeah. get Alex to watch, which is just wild. It, it's a yeah, wild, yeah, crazy it's, movie. It's crazy. A man oh, poops, man. In a, poops in a glass bowl and then turns into gold. And there's yeah, a baby yeah, hippo yeah. in it. the same exact thing as gold. Yep, yep, yep. Um, so with I mean with the David Lynch thing I mean uh, basically he didn't have final cut on that movie that's the thing that made him say oh, every single movie every single project moving forward I'm not gonna do unless I have final cut mm-hmm. I'll go paint instead I don't give a fuck I'm not <laughs> doing this yeah yeah and yeah they, I I mean myself I mean the only connection to Dune that I have is through David Lynch because I haven't read the Dune books I don't really care about Dune I don't know anything really about the major the major lore or anything. I know it's a very important sci-fi book, but um yeah. It's um it it is an important sci-fi book. From what I understand of it, it's like, hey, uh this is just a quick dune quick dune recap, I guess. Um mm. there's this planet that is really, really important because you can get this spice that is used for like faster than light travel or something. And the yeah. only place you can get it is on this desert shithole. And if mm. I remember right, it's sandworm poop <laughs> or mm. something. It's something like that. So it's like this whole political maneuvering thing where it's like whoever controls the spice controls the galaxy because they have faster and light bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, and it's, it's like, interesting. I, I don't really I saw Doom, but I didn't really see Doom because I was doing a live commentary over my first time viewing with uh-huh. uh, with uh, yeah the uh, Clash of the Commentaries. Okay. Yeah, um, they, they just, they tricked me. I thought I was going to do uh, the, uh, it was like uh, what was the Grumpy Cat movie. I had the Grumpy Cat movie on the USB stick, and I was going to fool Ryan with it, but they tricked me, all right. Are there any movies, Joe, that are coming out that you think are going to be interesting? Are there any of them in the, ever? Is, is there a single movie coming sure. out that you think is worthy? Uh, there is. Is it Tremor 7? <laughs> No, it's not that. It's uh, anything by Paul Thomas Anderson, uh, maybe a Coen Brothers new movie, David Lynch, anything is project. Uh, Martin Scorsese, Martin Scorsese is working on a new film. Ooh. Basically, the only thing I'm interested in is directors who have proven themselves before. You don't want to give new people a shot, Joe? You don't want to give the indies? I will. I'll give them a shot. I liked Hereditary. I liked uh, uh, Get Out. I, yeah, I'll enjoy a good indie, but like if, if I'm going to go into a theater and the movie costs... A hundred million dollars. Basically, it has to be from a director who I care about to go see. Because otherwise, I know I won't care about the movie. Who did The Lighthouse? That was uh, Rob Egger. He did The Witch beforehand. Okay. The Lighthouse is yeah. very fun. I'm going to trick Alex into watching that at some point, too. I think he'll enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there's um, yeah. there a cut scene from there that had a fully erect penis. They yes. had to cut it out. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. That's too dirty. Too dirty to be seen yep. on film. We must censor that for you can a, have a penis, for the viewing audience. But if it's erect, that's NC-17. Yes. Or X, I you forget. You can go which. half erect. You can go half erect. <laughs> half mast. Uh, in Midsummer, they actually... He's got a basically erect dick with blood on it, and they let that slide. Hmm. I don't remember. Oh, yeah, was yeah. that the, 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 the... The guy who was fucking the virgin. The yes, boyfriend. yes, I remember that. Midsummer is yeah. a weird movie, Alex. That one I wouldn't recommend because I think that's that's like mm-hmm. skipping. It's like you ever seen that meme where it's like the guy going up six steps at once. <laughs> Midsummer and Hereditary are like at the very top there in terms of like spooky, disconcerting. If you're going from like the scariest movie you've ever watched is being like like the Invisible Man and Tremors. If you're yeah. going to that, that's a big jump. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, Midsummer, Midsummer, and Hereditary aren't scary movies. They're That's deeply incorrect. disturbing movies. No, no, no. They're deeply disturbing. Joe, shut up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I Joe, mean, Joe, get your head out of your ass. <laughs> no, no. I mean, here's what I'm saying. They never set out to frighten you because something I, bad yeah. is lurking in the darkness. They they aim to frighten you because man is a deeply flawed species, and there is nothing we can do to fix that. And that's the frightening mm. thing about those movies. Yeah. Just like you know what I'm frightened of, Joe. What, my voice, my uh, loud voice, me spiking the audio, me ruining the audio, me breaking the podcast. Yes, what? yes, yes, that is actually, fuck, he got, he got me before I could say it, damn it. Uh-huh, yep. I know all your tricks, I know what the people are going to say to me. Yep, yep. Hey, Joe, you need to bathe more. <laughs> hey, Joe, why don't you try trimming your nostril hair? Hey, Joe, that attire is not uh, uh, publicly pleasing on you. You should just put on a burqa. Yeah. 
<laughs> that's what that's what Joe calls the face mask that he has to wear to no. go to the gas station to buy his energy drinks. He calls them burkas. You call it a fucking burka? <laughs> I was just thinking. I was just thinking in terms of five XL T shirts. Like you need to cover yourself more. I actually, um, I actually do call my face mask a burka, but. But I do it because one of the podcasts I listen to is a bunch of angry old white men, and they called mm-hmm. it a burka, and I do it ironically because it's mm-hmm. funny to me. I just call it a nah, sissy nah. hypno mask because it's funny. <laughs> oh, speaking nah. of sissy hypno, um, mm. is there anything else you guys want to talk about? Or I guess we could end this one. This was uh, this is a fun I'm episode. Okay. It's the I'm first fine. time. Yeah, I'm fine. I mean, uh, in, in in my closing. <laughs> in my closing thoughts, there's a lot of good stuff still coming out through independent studios. That's actually how we got a lot of the great movies that used to be made, is that a smaller studio would actually make, uh, pay for the money to direct it, finish it, and then a big studio might glom onto it and pull it into theaters. Now that doesn't really happen anymore. Uh, good movies don't really come to theaters. They hit streaming, they go on Blu-ray, but in your average town, you're not going to be able to see a good movie in a theater. And unfortunately, with COVID, theaters are dying anyway. Yeah. I mean, every single year, even before COVID, theater attendance gets lower and lower because people who don't care about movies have better stuff to do. They can kick rocks outside. <laughs> they can play. Disc golfing is big now. A lot of people moved on to disc golfing instead of movies. They can play Fortnite. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, us cinephiles, I mean, we're always going to be there. We're always going to be up our own asses, demanding <laughs> quality from the things we watch. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I basically, whenever I want to f- watch a film, I basically want it to try to hurt me as much as it can. That's mm-hmm. my idea of a good film. I want to be hurt. That's why Joe just watches, when he wants to get the emotions out, he just watches a video of a salad. <laughs> yeah, somebody's stirring it and like, you know, you're going to eat it, Joe. You're going to eat it, Joe. <laughs> eat your greens, Joseph. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. Yeah. So this was a little weird experimental thing. We had three people. It's not something we normally do. Um, oh, yeah. We recorded it on video here uh, through Discord to try and stop us from talking over each other. But Discord just like kept lagging. So we it did lagged. it anyway. It, yeah, so it yeah. didn't really help anything at all. But um, it, was fun. it was fun. I liked it. Um, we might do it again in the future. I might just yeah. uh, charge people to listen to it. How about that? Put it on Patreon only. <laughs> just yeah, start yeah. greedily rubbing my hands. Um, yeah, charge people for the privilege to see us sitting down and moving our hands sometimes. <laughs> Thanks for the $2, it's stroking kid. my beard. No one, I don't think the podcast people have seen my beard unless they watched uh, the Joe Buckley show over at Malevolent Movies, which we've been doing the yes. trial of Joseph yeah, yeah, yeah. Robert Buckley uh, with his lawyer, me. So, but I had my hair slicked back and I pulled a gun on him at one point. Yes, yes, you did do that. So uh, I, I'm over at Malevolent Movies. We basically do uh, basically funny reviews of bad indie horror movies. Uh, I'm also on The Man With No Brain, which is where my friend Ryan Ziegler basically tries to get into my noggin, find out what makes me tick. And I'm actually ready to announce this. Uh, coming in the future, I'm going to have a podcast called Passing the Buck, uh, which is going to be basically uh, my podcast. I'm kind of uh, experimenting with different co-hosts now. I'm just testing shit, seeing if it sticks. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you can look forward to that sometime in the future. There's a breaking news, breaking Joe Buck news. Uh, yeah, you can yeah, find yeah. this show here. Uh, YouTube, iTunes, Google Play. Fuck, I do it every time. YouTube, mm. iTunes, Google Podcast, Spotify, mm. uh, Discord in the description, Patreon in the description. I went and did my taxes recently, and the tax lady said, wow, your podcast is uh, very interesting. interesting. And I was like, <laughs> oh, fuck, did I just admit to tax fraud one of them? <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got some real hot takes in your podcast. Yeah, I talked. I'm, I'm sure I talked in one of the podcast episodes about being able to 3D print a gun or something. Like, I, <laughs> yeah. I don't know what people listen to, and it makes me nervous if they go back yeah. in their first episode for the person that's doing my taxes. It's like fucking uh, <laughs> the TNA with TNA and A episode. Fucking where all they know yeah. about <laughs> is, truck, is I, uh, joking about anime pussy. I, I forget whose joke this is, but somebody said uh, so. The stream is going to do with uh, beverages. What 3D printing did for assault rifles. <laughs> Bringing it to the masses. Yeah. Fuck. Um, thanks for listening, guys. Um, last thing I want to say uh, before the end of this, um, Joe, this is your final thing. Recommend two movies. Two movies for people to watch. For me, it's The Lighthouse okay. and uh, Clash of the Titans. What is yours? You have two movies, and the podcast is over, Joe. 
Yeah, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and recommend a little film. It's called Brazil. Basically, it's a story mm -hmm. of a man rebelling against his oppressive environment. Uh, that was a case where the studio was going to fuck up the movie horribly, and he just said, no, fuck you, took out an ad in the paper, and said, give me back my fucking movie, you communists. Uh, so that, and that worked for him. He got his movie back. <laughs> uh, the second movie, I'd say... Um, Super Mario Bros. movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The Doki Doki Panic film. I really enjoyed... Yeah. Brazil is surprisingly close to the Super Mario Bros. movie, by the way. What? Mm, yeah, it, it thematically links up. I'll have to force Alex at gunpoint to watch that one as well. <laughs> but give me a second yeah. movie, Joe, so I can end the podcast. Uh, my second movie is a very little scene movie. It's called American Job. It's by the director of American Movie. And basically, it is... Oh, thank you, Joe. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, my phone. Uh, so basically, <laughs> it is... Uh, it is a narrative-based hell movie where a man is going through and taking on, like, menial jobs. And then it just shows you him working. And then that's it. That's the movie. And it's basically the worst thing that you could ever imagine. It's dystopian. It is horrific. Um, it's soul-numbing. It's oppressive. <laughs> and I really like it. It's, it's, it's very good. low budget. It's very rough around the edges. But it's a fun, It's a good movie. All right, Alex, you recommend a movie now. <laughs> uh, I don't watch that many movies. <laughs> Fuck. All right, all right. Watch the Super Mario Brothers movie. And uh, <laughs> fuck it. Watch the thing. Thing's fucking awesome. All right. Thanks for listening, everyone. Uh, I love you all. Uh, good night. Drive safe. Text me when you get home. And uh, thank everyone for coming in. And it's a good podcast. Uh, hustle up. Uh, we'll, we'll hit them showers. <laughs>